Warning, this video will talk about running an OS made by Apple using the packaging format known as Snap. If you get angry when you see this, or when you hear about closed backends, or even when you hear this sound, then this video probably won't work for you. Hey everyone, most of you probably know that running Mac OS is the easiest on a Mac. Obviously, you can go the Hackintosh route, but you're pretty much gonna have to tailor your computer build specifically for Mac OS and it can be a painful road to follow. Fortunately, there is a tool called Sosumi and that will let you run macOS in a VM on your Linux desktop in just one simple command line. So let's take a look at how it works right after this. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare. And if that sounds familiar, it's because Tuxcare is the new brand regrouping kernel care and their extended lifecycle support services. So with Tuxcare, you now get three main services. The first one is live patching. So your Linux kernel, your libraries, your databases, your virtualizations, your IoT devices can all receive automated security patches that don't need downtime to be applied. They are all patched live. Now the second services is providing an extension to the lifecycle of the Linux kernel, which means that you can use a specific version of the kernel for longer and still be up to date in terms of security, even on an end of life distro. And third, they also offer support services which are reasonably priced and flexible because they are vendor independent. As a whole, Tuxcare is now an integrated brand of services to automate and improve your Linux operations so you get more flexibility in choosing the distro you want to run on your servers, when to upgrade it, and you can reduce your maintenance cost without sacrificing security. I left a link in the description below so you can check all the Tuxcare services and get a free proof of concept for your organization. So what is Sosumi? Sosumi is a snap package that lets you install a QMU virtual machine running macOS Catalina. It's nothing you couldn't do on your own with a bit more time, but this snap package has the advantage of being just one command line away and taking care of all the setup for you. It's been created by the dearly departed Alan Pope. No, 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 he's not gone like that. He just left Canonical and Ubuntu, that's it. It's based on work done by Foxlet with macOS Simple KVM, which does the exact same thing, but lets you do it all yourself when the snap package just compiles everything. This package will basically provide everything you need to run a QMU VM, download a system image of macOS, and boot right into it where you'll be able to install it and use it. It has a few default configs for RAM usage and display resolution, but we'll be able to adjust that after we install. Now be warned, the end user license agreement that you agree to when you install macOS stipulates that you're not supposed to do that and run macOS in a VM, so do this at your own risk. So how to install and run Sosumi? So the first thing is, as always with virtual machines, you need to ensure that your CPU supports virtualization in the BIOS. Depending on your CPU vendor and your motherboard, the option is generally called VTX, AMD V or SVM. Enable that in the BIOS before following these steps. Now the second prerequisite is that your distro has Snap installed. If you're on Ubuntu, Manjaro or Solus, it shouldn't be an issue. But if you're running something else, there's a handy guide, I'll leave a link in the description below, to install Snap on your machine. Should work pretty much everywhere, except maybe Linux Mint. They really, really don't like Snap. Now, last warning, it's a virtual machine. It's going to install a system inside of your Linux system, so it's gonna take up a bit of hard disk. Make sure that you have enough hard disk available. Around 40 gigabytes should be enough. Okay, so once you're all set, you just open a terminal window and you run this command. sudo snap install sosumi. Now let the installation run its course and you should get a menu entry called, you guessed it, sosumi. Run that to initialize the VM. You should see a terminal window which shows you the download progress for the system image that will let you install macOS. Do not close that window while Sosumi runs because it will shut down the VM as well. Generally, each time you open Sosumi, you'll get a window, a terminal window in the background. Don't close it. If you do, it closes the VM. You can just minimize it if you don't want to see it. Once the installation is complete, you'll be put into Clover, which is basically a prettier equivalent to Grub to let you select what OS to boot on Macs or Hackintoshes. Click inside the window to focus it, and then press Enter to start the installer. Now you'll notice that the VM window will grab your mouse pointer that will prevent you from using it to interact with other windows on your Linux desktop. 
to release the mouse pointer, you can press Ctrl, Alt and G at all times and your mouse pointer will be free again. Now, after a while, you should end up in the installer window for macOS. To begin with, you'll have to format the virtual hard disk that the VM has created for you. Don't worry, it won't touch your real hard drive or its partitions, it's a virtual hard drive. Double click on Disk Utility and select the disk called Apple Inc. Vert.io Block Media with a size of 68GB. Then click on Erase and type the name you want for your disk. You can select the format you'd prefer using, I used APFS as that's the most recent Apple file system, but it will work fine if you use macOS Extended. Click the Erase button. The operation should be pretty fast, and then you can close the disk utility window and start the installer by double-clicking on Reinstall macOS. Just follow the instructions on screen and select your newly formatted virtual hard drive, then click Install. The process will run its course, it can take about 20 minutes or more depending on your hard drive, so go get a coffee if you're that kind of person, or a cup of tea if you're an enlightened human being, and wait for it to complete. Now, once the installation itself is complete, your virtual machine will reboot and let you complete the first run setup. You'll end up in Clover again. Use the arrow keys to navigate to the option called Boot macOS Install from Mac HD, where Mac HD is the name that you gave to your virtual hard drive you formatted previously. You'll see a boot screen in verbose mode, which is a fancy way to say that you'll see lines of white text on black background, and the installation will now resume for another 20 minutes or so. So it's time for a second cup of tea, coffee, or a beer. One last reboot, and you'll be able to select the boot macOS from Mac HD option in Clover. It's the last option on the right, basically. Once the boot process is complete, you'll have to sift through a few settings screen and log in using an Apple ID or create one if you don't already have one. And after that, you are in and you will be able to use your system just like any other normal Mac. You're in macOS Catalina, you can use the default apps, you can use the App Store to install stuff, you can open the browser, basically anything, audio, internet, everything works. Now you will notice that things are pretty slow and that's because the VM only uses 2GB of RAM by default from your host system to power the virtual machine. The resolution is also fixed at 1280 by 720 which is a bit small for my use case, probably is going to be a bit small for you too. But don't worry, we can change all of that. So first you're gonna close the virtual machine by shutting it down or just closing the window and you can open your file manager in your Linux system. Snaps unfortunately create a folder in your slash home directory to store everything, so you head over there and go to the Sosumi folder, then common. Here you will find a file called launch. That's the file we want to edit to change the parameters of the VM. So first you're gonna want to make a copy in case something goes wrong so you can restore the previous version. Next you will open the file with your text editor of choice. Now in this file you'll see every single parameter that is used to launch the QMU virtual machine. I won't explain all of those in detail because there are plenty of guides online if you want to deep dive into QMU. Basically the line that interests us for the RAM is preceded by dash M. Dash M defines the memory usage of the VM in gigabytes. By default it's 2, but as I have 32 gigabytes on my device I'll put 16 in there. Now try not to put too much in there because your Linux host still needs RAM to work correctly so generally don't use more than half of what you're using unless you're only planning to use the VM exclusively but don't give it all the available RAM that your base system has. Now once you change that value you can just save the file and restart Sosumi and it will automatically update and use the right amount of RAM that you specified. Now for the window resolution it's a little bit more involved but it's still pretty simple. Basically we're going to tell the VM and its bootloader that we need another resolution than the one it provides and then we're going to tell it to use that. So inside of your macOS VM, open the terminal in the other folder of the applications directory. Then type diskutil list. This will let you see all the disks that are present on your VM. Grab the identifier for the disk that reads EFI, it should be the same as mine, disk2, S1, disk2 for the number of disk and S1 for the partition inside of that disk. Then type sudo diskutil mount disk2s1 or replace disk2s1 by the correct identifier for your EFI disk. This command will mount the EFI disk as a normal accessible disk. You can now open the finder and open it from the sidebar. There you'll see a clover folder and you can edit the config.plist file using the text edit app which is the basic text editor for macOS. Scroll a little bit and you'll find a line that reads screen resolution. 
Change the default of 12 AD by 720 by what you want to use. In my case, I put 1920 by 1080. Save the file. And now you can just shut down the VM and restart it. Right when you see the terminal window open, hit Escape. You'll see an interface that kind of looks like a BIOS. Select Device Manager, then OVMF Platform Configuration, and then Change Preferred. You'll get a nice drop-down list of resolutions and select the one you want to use in that. Then you press the F10 key to save, just like in a BIOS, and then Escape until you get back to the main menu, where you'll then select Continue. And now your VM should boot using the right resolution. And that's it for screen resolution and for RAM. That was pretty easy to set up, wasn't it? Now you can also change the CPU core count affected to the VM. By default, you'll get four threads for two cores listed in the line dash SMP four comma cores equal two. You can change that by putting another number. I tried putting six threads and three cores, but the VM wouldn't start, but it did work with eight threads and four cores, which should give it a nice speed boost. You can also see that the CPU type changes in the About This Mac window in the virtual machine. It's now showing that I have two quad-core Xeons. And now you should have a pretty nice, simple QMU virtual machine to run macOS and do everything that you want to do inside of that. Basically, it's a QMU machine, so there is nothing stopping you from experimenting with GPU pass-through or even running the virtual machine on another computer and remote logging in into it using VNC or Spice. It's it's a QMU VM. If you want to deep dive into that, there are a lot of other options that you could tweak, configure, or another bunch of use case that you could apply to yourself. But that's out of the scope of this video. I just wanted to tell you about this tool that lets you install with one command line and a few configurations afterwards, which are only needed if the defaults don't work for you. Now, of course, graphical acceleration will be limited as it's in a VM, and so games won't work, but who games on a Mac? And Graphical intensive applications like Final Cut Pro or video editing programs will probably not work correctly either. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. You can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Now, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!